Look down at your arm. They're on you right now. In fact, they're everywhere. On your skin, in your mouth, on your teeth, just crawling, breathing, and farting all over the place. Come on! ということで、今回はプロバイオティクスに関して掘り下げていこうと思います。説明してくれるのはドクターマイク。医学の他にもライフスタイルや食事に関してもとても詳しい方です。今回は結構ややこしいワードが出てくるので、理解を深めるために先に確認しておきたい単語があります。マイクロバイオーム、プロバイオティクス、プレバイオティクス。プロバイオティクスの前にこのマイクロバイオームが何かを知る必要がありますこのマイクロバイオームは細菌層を意味します細菌層とはバクテリアの集団のことを指すんですがたくさんの細菌が集まっているその集団が細菌層です今回動画内では基本的に腸内細菌層のことを指していて腸の中に生息する細菌の集まりのことを指しています字幕ではマイクロバイオームを腸内細菌層や細菌層と訳していますこの集団の中には大きく3種類の菌が住んでいると言われていて体にいい働きをする善玉菌体に悪い働きをする悪玉菌そしてどちらにも属さない日和美菌です善玉菌はビフィズス菌や乳酸菌のように悪玉菌の侵入を防いだり腸の運動を促してお腹の調子を整えてくれます悪玉菌は腸内で有害物質を作り出し便秘や下痢を引き起こす原因になりますアルコールや動物性タンパク質を餌として好みます日和美菌はどちらにも属しませんが優勢な方の味方をする働きがありますこの細菌たちが住んでいる腸の中を顕微鏡で覗くとまるでお花畑のように見えるそうですそうこの腸内のお花畑を腸内フローラと呼びますよく腸内フローラを整えましょうというのを聞いたことがあると思いますがそれはマイクロバイオーム腸内細菌層を悪玉菌よりも善玉菌を多くしましょうという意味です数年前に流行った腸活は腸内フローラを整え維持することなんですねそしてプロバイオティクス今日のテーマです簡単に言うと乳酸菌やビフィズス菌のような善玉菌のことで腸内フローラを整える生きた微生物と定義されていますこのプロバイオティクス微生物ですから餌となる食べ物を必要としますそれがプレバイオティクスです食物繊維やオリゴ糖がプレバイオティクスを指しますこの2つがあってマイクロバイオームが整うわけですさあここからが本番ですドクターマイクにプレバイオティクスの解説をしてもらいましょう Look down at your arm They're on you right now. In fact, they're everywhere. On your skin, in your mouth, on your teeth, just crawling, breathing, and farting all over the place. Oh, come on! Relax. I'm just talking about bacteria. And I know reflexively you're thinking, well, bacteria, that must be a bad thing. Not really. You have more good bacteria than bad bacteria in your body. Our bodies are home to over a hundred trillion good bacteria. Bacteria, well over a thousand species and somewhere between seven to nine thousand strains of these species. Not only are these bacteria good for us, but they're practically essential to our survival. This symbiotic relationship between us humans and good bacteria is known as mutualism. And it's basically when both parties are benefiting from living together or existing together. If you've ever seen a rhino with a little bird sitting on top of its back, it's called an oxpecker bird. That bird is eating ticks and parasites off the rhino's back. So the bird is benefiting because it's getting fed. The rhino's benefiting because it's getting less ticks and parasites on its back. Everybody He's winning. Woo! The type of good bacteria I want to talk about today lives primarily within your gut. And you've heard the term. 
probiotic. It's become a mega industry into the hundred billions of people selling supplements, selling foods that are probiotic rich. But do we really know what the term probiotic means? Probiotics are live microorganisms, basically bacteria and sometimes yeast, that give some sort of positive health benefit to the person taking them. In order for me to best explain how probiotics work, we need to understand how the gut works. Now, the job of the gut, when we're talking about the small intestine and the large intestine, is to extract energy from foods, absorb certain uh, nutrients like vitamins, minerals, and really get rid of the waste. When you're taking probiotics, the majority of the probiotics end up at the end of your intestinal system, also known as the colon. Found within your GI tract uh, or your gut is something known as a microbiome. This is the ecosystem that contains uh, bacteria, fungi. Those things are actually essential to your survival because unfortunately your digestive system can't extract all the necessary nutrients from all the different types of foods you're consuming. So when we're talking about the good bacteria within your gut, we're actually talking about the bacteria that's helping you get some of the nutrients from your food to improve your body's immune function, to support the integrity of the wall of your intestines. This is the job of the good bacteria. I just wanted to say thanks. Partner. Our knowledge and the majority of the research done on the microbiome is fairly new, with the majority of the studies popping up in the last 20 years. Within this recent research, we found that the gut microbiome is incredibly important to our health but we don't totally understand it just yet. We've seen relationships between irregularities in the microbiome and diseases like diabetes, obesity, heart disease, mental conditions like depression, anxiety, but it's really a cause and effect dilemma. Basically, the chicken or the egg. We're not sure what came first, the irregularities of the microbiome or the illnesses themselves. The gut-mind connection is what truly gets me excited. Just imagine this for a second. The bacteria found within your gut can be controlling your emotions, your depressive, anxiety symptoms, your moods, your appetite even. That's what preliminary research is showing. After hearing the links of all these serious diseases and the gut-mind connection, you probably want to keep your microbiome as healthy and diverse as possible. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you want to focus on your diet. No surprise here. Focus on eating vegetables, whole grains, legumes. These are fiber-rich foods. Fiber-rich foods are basically known as prebiotics as they serve as food for the probiotics. Next, you want to consume probiotic-rich foods like yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi. These foods naturally contain that good bacteria we've been talking about. Now, I know some people resort to taking probiotic supplements, but I'll touch on that shortly. Now, there have been ways that you can actually hurt your microbiome. First and foremost is a diet rich in refined carbohydrates. I'm talking about white breads, white pasta, white rice, sugars, even artificial sweeteners. Next up is bad sleep. If you don't get enough sleep, I've talked about the consequences of that in the past, but it also hurts your microbiome. Because guess what? The bacteria in your gut also have a circadian rhythm. They like for you to get quality sleep. Next is antibiotics. When you use antibiotics inappropriately or you overuse them, you actually kill off that good bacteria in your gut and you can create an overgrowth of harmful bacteria. Last but not least is stress. Yep, those folks who are more stressed out and experience chronic stress for an extended period of time have a disruption in their microbiome, both with higher amounts of bad bacteria and lower amounts of good bacteria. Stop getting worked up over small things. Now, probiotic supplements multi-billion dollar industry. Marketers are quick to make health claims about the benefits of taking their supplements. But in reality, the picture is so much more complex. Like I said earlier, there's seven to 9,000 different strains of good bacteria inside your gut. Increasing the number of a specific strain can have different impacts depending on which condition you have. Probiotics in general are considered a safe supplement, but there are harms and they do exist, especially if you have a weakened immune system or you have certain illnesses like like cancer. There's been a recent study that came out of Israel showing that taking probiotics can actually harm 
your microbiome depending on which probiotic you take. My recommendation when it comes to probiotic supplements is that the average healthy person should not be taking a daily probiotic. It hasn't been proven to give enough benefit to warrant the risks, and especially spending money on a supplement that may not give you any benefit whatsoever. Now the conditions where I have seen evidence to prove that there exists a benefit is in traveler's diarrhea, antibiotic associated diarrhea, very specific conditions known as necrotizing enterocolitis in young children. Last but not least, those who have inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis. Notice that these are very specific instances where I reach for probiotics as a possible treatment option. For those of you considering starting to take a probiotic, First and foremost, please have a conversation with your doctor or health professional on whether or not you should be actually doing this. Next, I want you to not skip proven treatments for your condition and instead go for unproven treatments. Make sure you pay attention to the label. There are a few things to look out for. One, the expiration date and storage instructions. Second, look at the CFUs. That's the colony forming units. Look for a number bigger or at five billion. And finally, look to get enteric coated probiotics because those are less likely to get destroyed by the acid in your stomach. The future of probiotics and even probiotic supplements is very interesting. The potential for unlocking so many new health secrets is really immense. I'm excited about it, you should be excited about it. And as always, stay happy and healthy. Hi, マイクがプロバイオティクスを使用して治療を行う症状の一つに炎症性腸疾患がありました。これは利益ガットと関係していると こちらは概要欄に貼っておきますが、CFU は300億です。摂取して、お腹の膨慢感を感じたら量を減らして100億から150億から始めてみてください。ちなみにこちらのプロバイオティクスは50億です。少量から始めたい人はこちらも参考に